Argentina's president, Javier Malay, is an anarcho-capitalist. That's how he describes himself. Anarcho-capitalism is a moral philosophy. It's an economic philosophy as well. Uh, it has, so happens that uh, Javier is an economist, and that is probably how he came to this point. Some people come to the point of being an anarcho-capitalist by uh, thinking about morality, some by economics, some are, there are a lot of fringe people in the movement as well who are conspiracy conjecturists or people who just don't like the establishment and they park themselves on the, uh, uh, on the parking lot of the uh, anarcho-capitalist uh, arena. To be a true anarcho-capitalist, what is that? What does that mean? Is Javier really an anarcho-capitalist? Well, anarcho is, uh, you know, comes from anarchy. Well, anarchy, if you look at the base of anarchy, all that means is without rulers. So you don't have rulers. Uh, and the definition of ruler being someone who is telling you what to do against your uh, permission or without your approval. So if you are a boss at the uh, the sawmill and somebody comes and says, hey, I want to work for you. And you say, yeah, that sounds great. I'll tell you how to do stuff and what, what I need done. And I'll pay you this much. And you guys come to a mutual voluntary agreement. Then you are not a ruler over this worker. Um, that is a, a consensual OK thing. So without rulers means somebody is bossing you around without you without coercion, agreeing, hey, yeah, I do want this person to run my life and tell me how things will go. So an anarcho-capitalist is somebody who believes that there shouldn't be rulers that tell people what to do without their permission. And then the capitalist part means that people should have uh, the, the right or not even right, but people should own the means of production. So you own your own body. If you choose to go out into the uh, woods or rent the woods on your neighbor's farm and pick up a stick and sharpen it and then sell it to someone as a spear, a capitalist believes that you should reap the benefit of what you are paid for that spear. You should not be given, just because you happen to be a human being, you should not be given a knife for free uh, to carve the spear. You should not have people be required to help you find the stick. You go out, you put your own productive uh, capabilities, your own labor, your own imagination, your own initiative, your own tools. You own all of those things. You go out, you create what you create. If it's good and other people value it, then you can exchange it for things of value like money or bartering something, that kind of thing. So is have, uh, Javier an anarcho-capitalist? Well, he believes that it's better to have a world without rulers or a ruling class or a state. But wait a minute. He is the state. He came. He became the, the leader of a state, the top person, the ruler of people who don't want to be ruled. So is he truly an anarcho-capitalist? Well, perhaps in philosophy, I would say that in actual day-to-day -day action, the consistent anarcho-capitalist who wasn't thinking of strategy or reality, who was simply doing what was right at that moment based on what they understood philosophy, economics to be, Javier should have, as soon as he became president, said, um, I hereby say that nobody ever has to pay taxes again. Nobody has to do what I say. I'm up here. I'm going to offer some suggestions. Those of you who do want to chip in some money. So we have national defense. So we have roads. So we have whatever you're welcome to, but by no means do you have to, we're not going to provide those things to the people who don't want it, but we no longer are a government. We're just a big company. That's going to slowly dissolve itself. Um, nobody is getting paid in this company with money that's stolen from you taxes. Um, that's what he would have done if he was hundred percent consistent. However, he has some strategy in him also, and uh, who knows what he has planned for the long term. Is he truly an anarcho-capitalist? I would say yes, If it, that, that might be where his philosophy lies. And then I would say, but he's not doing it 100% as a purist. Well, neither am I. Um, part of my business is operated. I drive on government roads to get to my business. My Part of my business is on government property. Um, there, I'm not pure either. I don't think anybody is 100% pure. Um, I think it would be very difficult to live in today's world if we were 100% stoically pure 
and said, we are not going to touch anything in this world that had anything to do with the government. So I'm not even going to drink this bottle of water because it was transported on government roads. Therefore, I will not do that. I'm not even going to cut down a tree with an ax that was taxed. I'm going to completely be away from anything that has anything to do with government. Well, none of us do that. And so I would say that there is a scale that if you're a president of a country, okay, you're higher on the scale than someone who is doing everything to remove themselves from the state. But I'm kind of thinking that whether or not he is really truly the most pure anarcho-capitalist ever, I'm glad he exists. And he is doing some good things. He is igniting a, a discussion. He, look at how the internet exploded. I, I'm recording this in, uh, I think, around January 20th, 2024. And since he spoke at the Central the World uh, Central Planners uh, Forum, was a World Economic Forum, since he spoke at that and spoke a bunch of things that were truths, true out of the mouth of a, an anarcho-capitalist, wonderful things. Okay, whether or not he's living them all 100%, I don't really care. He had got a great conversation going. He sparked it. He set an example of bravery. Um, yeah, I'm kind of happy with him at the moment. And uh, if you haven't watched the speech, there's a great version of it. Uh, I did a video with my friend Patrick. Uh, he he produced this on his channel. It's it's well done. Uh, it's, you know, except for my part. But Patrick was brilliant. We had fun on it, uh, fun at it. Uh, it's about an hour long, just a little under an hour. Goes through his speech and. It's a really neat thing to watch. Uh, I suggest that you check that out. Thanks for watching this.